Great, thank you so much. Good morning, good afternoon, um, wherever you are. My name is John Harrison. I'm a solutions producer at Parsons TKO. I'm here to talk about Google Ads, Google Ad Grants, and some other tools that you can use to do advertising with your nonprofit. My background is I have about two decades working in digital marketing, marketing technology, advertising, and about 10 years working with nonprofits. I'm Google Ads certified. Um, I've run the Google Ad Grants um, program for a national nonprofit for a few years with some colleagues who hopefully maybe will join the call today to celebrate in our success. And that was part of a set of strategies that helped to increase our website sessions more than 12%, 1200% 1, uh, over that same time period. So it's a very valuable program and I'm happy to share as much as I can about it with you today. So as I said, we're going to be talking about Google Ad Grants and more. We'll talk a little bit about Google Ads um, and the difference between Google Ads and Ad Grants. And we'll spend one slide talking about a comparable program that Microsoft has with Microsoft Bing Ads. Before we get started, I want to talk a little bit about Parsons TKO. Uh, we have a philosophy um, about the way that we look at uh, possibilities. Our company philosophy is engagement architecture. It's how people, processes, platforms, and the technologies intersect with experiences, engagement, and data, and how these intersections can inform strategic thinking and tactics that your organization can leverage. So in a nutshell, if you had to describe this to a relative, um, engagement architecture is about making your websites, your CRM, your email marketing, and your social media efforts better business tools. So advertising, you know, whether it's with Google, with Microsoft, LinkedIn, Facebook, or even TikTok, it's really more of an entry point into this architecture. But nonetheless, it does require good processes, smart people, and data-informed decision-making to really take full advantage of. So I wanted to share some of the goals of today's webinar. Today, we're going to be learning about Google Ad Grants, we're going to learn about the program and what it means to be eligible for the program. We'll talk a bit about how the Google Ad Grants platform differs from Google Ads and when to consider using one versus the other, or in some cases, considering using both. And as I stated, we'll also review Microsoft's comparable offering and Bing Ads for nonprofits. We'll also get everyone accustomed to some common search engine marketing and search engine optimization terms so that we can start to have a common language around this effort. We'll look at what you need to do to get started with Google Ad Grants, or if you're already using the program, what you can do to maximize your results. And we'll look at some ways you can think about writing your first ad and the tools that are both paid and free that can help you. So with that in mind, I wanted to queue up a quick poll just to get a sense from the audience today, um, the level of experience that folks have with this program. So I'm going to let Mickey queue up our poll. If you could take a minute and give us some answers around your experience. Great. Very helpful. Let's see, looks like most people on the call have not used Google Ad Grants and are curious. We'll give folks another 15 seconds. This is very good. I think the folks that have not used it, I think you'll have a lot to learn. And if you're if you have it at your organization and you need improvements, you know there's a lot of tidbits of information that will help you improve what you're doing. All right. So let's talk a little bit about when audiences search for us. When audiences search for us, whether they're coming through Google, like Google search, whether they're coming through your social media channels, or if they're coming through other some other form of advertising, like you see here in number two, um, 
they have a lot of noise to get through before they land on your site. So depending on the channel, they may have to weed through a lot of half open doors, like a link tree on Instagram, YouTube ads that are kind of intrusive and getting in the way, perhaps remarketing ads, which is something we'll talk about when we talk about paid ads that really keep folks from getting to your site necessarily, or maybe just distracting them from their original intent of, of searching for your brand, what, however they're getting to it. So a lot of these advertising channels are less accessible and they're more disruptive to your audience intent than a search results page is. And often those different uh, advertising channels are a little harder to attribute success to. We also see a lot of nonprofits that don't have the time or the resources to commit um, to paid media display networks and remarketing. So right now in 2022, it feels like a lot of advertising is really heavily focused on distraction, distracting you from why you originally came to a certain place to find more information. So from a maturity perspective, you know, search advertising is a great generational e equalizer. It's less questionable, um, less nefarious, and a more accessible channel that nonprofits should and can leverage. One thing I wanna point out here around number three here is the home page of your website is no longer the first impression that folks have of your website. So ideally you wanna get them to your website, but that's not the first touch point that they have about your brand. So the search engine results page and how you show up on this page is very important. So this is one of the things that the Google Ad Grants, the Google Ads program, and the Microsoft Comparable Offering can help improve is the way that you show up here on number three. So let's talk a little bit about what Google Ad Grants is. It's many things. I'm not going to go through each one of these little things. I think everyone can read along, but I'll give you a little background. It was established in 2003 by Sheryl Sandberg while she was at Google before she came to Facebook. And she did this as a program to help nonprofits amplify their causes, get website visits, attract new leads, and convert followers and advocates. So in a nutshell, it's a free version of the Google ad platform. The interface looks the same when you're interacting with one or the other, but there's some different nuances that we'll, we'll talk about. And Google ad grants is available to qualifying nonprofits. It is limited to the Google search network, um, provides up to $10,000 a month in free text-based ads that will, would appear in Google search results. There are some limitations and policies with the program that have to be adhered to for Google to continue to dole out the money on a continual basis, which we'll delve into in a few minutes. The Ad Grants program is part of Google for Nonprofits. And I highly recommend everybody check this program out if you're not already in the know of what it's about, uh, because Google has extended Google for Nonprofits to not just Google Ad Grants, but also if you're looking for a file saving a file system or an email system to use with your nonprofit, um, Google Workspace for Nonprofits is part of the program. The YouTube Nonprofit Program is part of it as well, and also Google Earth and Maps. And a really cool thing about um, Google for Nonprofits program is that you get more visibility on two of the most popular search engines if you're participating, both YouTube and Google Search. So it's just something to think about. TechSoup is the vendor that handles the validation with Google. Um, typically takes about four to six days, can take as long as two to four weeks, depending on you know, how complex your nonprofit might be. It goes through a validation process. Later on in the presentation, we'll talk through some things that you can do to prepare that will help this process go smoothly and hopefully um, more fast. So why do this program? Why consider the Google Ad Grants program? These are some quotes that uh, are on Google's site, you know, about uh, different organizations that have seen double digit increases in their online fundraising and their donations, and they're attributing that to ad grants. Um, since joining the ad grants program, we've seen interest in our online services increase by 350% and are averaging about 2000 unique visitors a month to our our website. 
these quotes are pretty much in line with what I've seen at other nonprofits when they start doing this program. Um, things start to get better because you're participating more in Google's ecosystem. And I'll, I have a story on the next slide, which I'll go into. So in review, there's five reasons to consider ad grants. Number one, it's a less intrusive, accessible form of advertising. Number two, everybody uses search, so your audience reach will span generations and devices. Number three, by participating more in Google's ecosystem, you'll see these tangential benefits. Number four, you'll have the potential to gain more subscribers, get more grants, increase donations, have more downloads, and capture more leads. And number five, you'll add a new valuable source of traffic to your engagement architecture. Over here on the right, um, this is up here at the top. This is just some data that I pulled from. Uh, I helped to run a grant for a medium-sized nonprofit for a few years with some colleagues. And while it was a learning curve to get started, I definitely think this organization benefited from the participation. And you know, these this is just uh, some analytics from the program, really high level. You know, we did get more than fifteen thousand clicks onto our website from running the program over that period of time. We utilized more than $370,000 worth of Google Ad Grants money, and it brought more than uh, first-time users to the, to the website over that period of time. It also, this is just for illustration purposes down here, but it also added a new pie slice to our traffic sources. So when I talk about traffic sources, I'm talking about how people are coming into our engagement architecture, how they're coming into our website. So, you know, we had strong social, we had strong email marketing, we had strong organic search. But when we signed up for this program, the pie grew. And we also added an additional slice, which was also kind of interesting. So this ad grants component really brought in a lot of additional traffic. And it helped us uh, create some more conversion opportunities, uh, running grant programs where the audiences were hard to get at and so on. So. So let's take a minute to get started and talk about the eligibility and dependencies that you need to have thought of and need to have in place as you're going through this process applying with uh, TechSoup. So the ad grants eligibility, you have to be a 501c3 nonprofit organization in the United States or hold a similar status in one of the 50 countries. They change these uh, eligibility rules uh, from time to time. I think Russia is no longer on the list <laughs> as an example. So there's some more information on Google's Ad Grants website that you can check out and we'll send the links along at the end of this presentation. Your organization can't be a hospital, a school or a college or a governmental institution. But the one, one uh, caveat here is philanthropic arms of educational institutions may still be eligible. So it is worth checking if, if you're doing that kind of thing with your organization. You must have a high quality website, which is hosted on your own domain that your, own, that your organization owns. And you can request eligibility for other sites in your organization's ecosystem. So if you have microsites or satellite websites, you can run ads to those sites as well. But it's best to start with your main quote unquote website. And your website must have an SSL certificate installed. So if you look at this uh, padlock in Google Chrome, if you have that padlock on your website, um, you know that you've got SSL installed on your website. If it's missing, that's something you definitely need to take care of because Google will not approve your application if it's not there. And obviously you must agree to the terms of service for Google nonprofits and Google ads. Some additional website prep that you would wanna consider um, as you're going through this process. There are some technical dependencies. You need to have Google Analytics installed. Um, and there are two different versions of Google Analytics uh, out in the wild today. There's Google Analytics version three, which is the older version. If you've heard of a UA tracking code, that's typically what GA3 is. It works for now, but Google is uh, moving to a Google Analytics 4 upgrade. Uh, we have, uh, we've done a webinar and we've got some blog posts and white papers uh, available on our website about this that you can check out. 
Um, in a nutshell, conversion tracking is handled differently in Google Analytics 3 versus Google Analytics 4. So if you're considering what to do first, you may want to go ahead and get Google Analytics 4 installed on your website, but it's not a showstopper. Okay. Some of the content considerations you have, you need to make sure that your 501c3 status is prominently displayed on your site. You need to make sure that your nonprofit mission statement is easily accessible. Typically, the validation process folks are looking for your about us page or your about page or what we do page. So make sure that this is easy to get to, that it's not buried somewhere and hard to find. That's going to speed things up. And also TechSoup will check that your organization owns the domain name. So you can't use like a Square, Squarespace site or a Weebly site um, to run Google Ad Grants. And I see we have some questions. Uh, so what does Google consider to be a high quality website? We'll actually talk about this in some of the future slides. So be patient, we'll get to that. And then number two, are fiscally sponsored private 503Cs eligible? Or must the entity be its own 501C3 to qualify for Google grants? That's a great question. I'll have to do, do some digging on that one. I've worked with organizations that have a 501c3 and a 501c4, you know, as part of their organization. So uh, Google will approve 501c3 organizations that have like a lobbying or an advocacy wing that's a 501c4, but they're very strict about making sure that you're not sending your ads to landing pages that are on those sites. So I hope that helps a little bit, but that's definitely something we can do some research for, with. And then another question, what about an organization's foundation which funds the organization? Would that be eligible? I think so, as long as it's a 501c3. And that's something we can research as well. And thanks for these questions, they're great. So let's move to the next section. We, I wanted to kind of get a common language with everybody um, during this webinar to really get a sense of some of the terms that we'll talk about so that you understand what they are. You know, you don't have to remember what they all are, but if you pick up on a few of them, it will help you as you're going through the setup process to understand Google's language around paid ads, around ad grants, and around how visitors are gonna be interacting with your ads and how they get to your website and so on. So let's talk a little bit about SERP. SERP stands for Search Engine Results Page. So if you look at this example over here, number one, this is for the Nature Conservancy. I searched for their brand, and this is what showed up. So this is their Search Engine Results Page. They show up pretty prominently. They've got a donate ad at the top, and then they've got their organic search result down here as well. So this is what I was talking about earlier when I say, how do you show up in your Search Engine Results Page? Because Google Ad Grants can help improve that experience, especially with your branded terms. Number two, impressions. An impression is counted when an ad is displayed with or without a click. It doesn't count against your ad spend or against your grant, but if someone sees an ad when they search for something, that counts as an impression. So it is valuable brand awareness. Clicks, obviously, when a user clicks on an ad and they're taken to the ad's landing page. So for instance, if I click on the Donate Now to Protect Na Nature, Donate Today, and it directs me to the Nature Conservancy's Donate page, that counts as a click. And that's when the campaign is charged using whatever bid I set up in Google Ad Grants or in Google Ads. The click-through rate it's really just an equation. It's the percentage of impressions that result in a click on your ad. So for example, an ad with 100 clicks and 1,000 impressions would have a click-through rate of 10%. There's an important distinction between paid ads and ad grants. So the ad grants requires that you maintain a 5% average click-through rate for all of your ads. Now, this scares some folks off and it can be hard to maintain, but Google has added some newer features that we'll talk through that make this a lot easier 
and it involves artificial intelligence and machine learning on the back end. So it's definitely easier to do. In the past, when we didn't have these tools available to us, it was a little bit harder to maintain that consistent click-through rate, especially with ads that didn't have as much um, impressions or clicks as we wanted. CPC is the cost per click. So that's really the amount that you're willing to spend or are charged for each click. Conversion is really any action that's, that's valuable to your organization that's on your website. Conversion tracking allows you to measure the number of people viewing important pages on your website, you know, such as thank you pages for submitting a donation, making phone calls using a Google forwarding number, downloading apps, form submits, et cetera. Google Ads allows you to use dedicated conversion tracking or import conversion tracking from Google Analytics as well. So this is something that Parsons TKO can help with if this is something that's confounding, because I know it definitely sounds confounding as I'm talking through it. The conversion rate is a percentage of clicks or interactions that result in a conversion. So that's really another formula here. And I see we have another question. We have more than one website. The organization's primary website is somewhat complicated. We'd like to send people to the second website for a specific campaign. Can we do that with Google Ads? Yes, you can. There is a process that you can request. Um, Google will approve additional websites. They do some checking to make sure that it is part of your ecosystem. And it does take a little bit of time to get the approval through. through. But you can, you can do that with uh, different websites in your ecosystem for a specific campaign. Great question. So part two of our glossary, keyword is the main targeting method used for search campaigns. So it's really just an instruction determined by the keyword text and, and match type to Google about when to show ads based on a keywords ad group. So for instance, if you look at this, uh, Google search result up here, climate change organizations to donate to. Those are a series of keywords that make up a search term. And so you can actually bid on different ways of building that search term using keyword match types. We're not gonna get into match types. That's a little bit more of an advanced um, like 102 or 103 level thing, but there's lots of ways to build your keywords so that your Nonprofits brand search terms are getting picked up well. The campaign is the top level structure of your account. So really think of campaigns as folders within your account. You can create one campaign, you can create multiple campaigns. And ad groups are sort of the buckets that structure those ads. So you might put different types of keywords in different ad groups that would roll up to a campaign. And each campaign contains one or more ad groups to create a more granular structure inside the account. One key distinction with the uh, with ad groups is I believe you have to have two ad groups per campaign if you're running um, Google Ad Grants. So something to consider. Display link is really it's a vanity link that shows up in an ad. Um, if you look at this ad up here where it says ad and it says act climbworks.com, let's reverse forward slash climate change. That's a display link. That's not a real link that's going to go to the underlying landing page for this ad. But it's a way of getting more visibility on the actual URL as a way to promote the conversion action that's on the landing page underneath this ad. The actual link would be the uh, headline text that you see here, let's reverse climate change, join the fight for the planet. The site links extension is what you see down here in this Ukraine ad. So if you see these four links down at the bottom, um, they're really short blurbs, almost like call to action type links that uh, you know would further engage your audiences and compel them to click on the ad. These may go to different pages. You know, you can set these up to, to go to different pages on your site, but it's another thing that you can add um, to your Google Ad Grants and Google Ads to get more visibility and more real estate on that search results page. Phone extension um, is a phone number that shows up on the ad. If 
this ser is served up on a mobile device and someone clicks on it, it can actually be tracked as a conversion um, so that you don't even have to send someone to your website. They can just click on that phone number and it can be tracked as a conversion, which is a exciting way to get people to talk to someone at your organization and also make that relationship to the Google ads or the Google ad grants that you're, that you're working with. Return on ad spend is a really interesting one. This is a metric that divides the total revenue by the total advertising spend. So for example, this is something that's really good to make the case for getting funds for advertising or getting resources to support the Google Ad Grants program in your organization. For instance, if your total donation revenue from, from Google Ads or Ad Grants as a traffic source was $10,000 and you spent $5,000 of your grant money, then your return on your ad spend, your ROAS, would be 200%. So this is an impressive metric to, to go to your executives with if you're looking to you know, staff this, um, this program. And RSAs, <clears throat> it stands for responsive search ads. I put an asterisk by this because we're going to be looking at this in an upcoming section. But it's definitely something to be aware of because it's a, the new artificial intelligence uh, machine learning way that Google is billing your ads so that they get max click through rate. All right, so this section, we're gonna talk about when you might want to consider using paid Google Ads. Google Ads used to be known formally as Google AdWords. Um, it's been updated in the past couple of years to just Google Ads. And so there is some confusion around like, well, when should I use Google Ads and when should I use Google Ad Grants? Understanding some of the limitations around the Google Ad Grant will help you understand, well, maybe this is the type of uh, campaign that I want to run with some actual dollars behind it so that I can be more competitive. So in a nutshell, Google Ad Grants, like we've talked about, free for qualifying nonprofits. You don't need to have design skills necessarily, um, but if you can write good content, um, that's going to be very helpful. You're limited to $10,000 uh, from Google each month to create text-based search network ads. So if you want to spend more money, obviously um, Google Ads the paid version is something to consider. Some of the key differences with Google Ads, you know, it's definitely much more sophisticated. There's many more channels than just search, just search engine results pages where your ad will show. There's remarketing, there's display network, there's YouTube advertising. Um, there's a lot of different options with Google Ads. It's much more sophisticated. So it does require much more care and feeding to really get the bang out of it that you need. Um, a lot of times you may need a competitive analysis tool um, that requires a time commitment to learning. And a lot of the ads that the Google Ads platform can run, you know, like the Display Network banner ads, can be kind of annoying. They're not as accessible as the search ads. So it's something to be aware of. If you're, you know, if your nonprofit is committed to being more accessible and being more benevolent about your advertising, you may want to err on the side of trying to get as much as you can out of Google ads first, and then seeing if you actually need to pony up cash to pay for a paid Google ads account. So when to use traditional digital ads? This is just an example use case of remarketing, which is something that I know everyone on the call is probably aware of and has experienced being a target of remarketing at some point. Um, so if this is something you want to leverage, um, like where you have a visitor that visits your website, uh, you're using Google Chrome on your as your browser, you're using Google Analytics on your website, this user has used Google search. So they're part of the Google ecosystem. Google's capturing some data about this user when they visit the website. The user exits, right? And then days, uh, hours or days later, you know, they, they're using another website, right? While browsing. And then the ad for your organization shows up on the other websites. And the hope is that you'll click on the ad and it will put you right back on your organization's website. So that's really what remarketing is. This is not the kind of thing you can do uh, easily with Google Ad Grants. 
Um, so that's something to be aware of. Also, if you want to launch very detailed um, targeted ads, you know, using like affinity and cohort groupings or do the banner ads we talked about, that's something where you would want to consider paid ads. If you want to spend funds from a significant advertising budget, you know, I know a lot of nonprofits don't have that, but if you happen to, if you have a donor that has invested in this, you know, that's something you definitely want to leverage with uh, Google paid ads. If you want to make a profit or revenue off of a product, so if you have like a social impact investing component of the work that your organization is doing, it's probably not a 501c3 in that um, particular piece of your organization. That's where you'd want to use paid ads. And if you try to sell products or you try to sell financial products or, or do things like that with Google ad grants, Google ad grants can um, pause your account until you stop doing those kinds of things. So that's when you really want to think about, is this uh, you know, the best time to, to use paid ads? And if you want to get engagement on a 501c4 landing page, so if your organization is doing lots of lobbying or political advocacy, definitely you want to consider using paid ads versus Google ad grants. So I see we have another question. Do Google, do Google ad grants work on all browsers or just Chrome? It, it does work on all browsers, assuming that folks are using the Google search engine on those browsers. So if someone's using Microsoft Edge or Safari or Firefox and they're using the Google search engine, then they will see the ads, yes. The, um, Google has less information about the, the user. So the ads serving up might not be as high quality as it is when they're using Google Chrome, but that's a great question. So some other ways that ad grants might not be the best option. If you need to bid more than $3.29 per keyword, that's currently the max um, right now for, for the bidding that you can do on keywords. We'll look at a slide in a few minutes about some keywords that cost a lot of money. If you're competing head on with for profits, like there's a lot of nonprofit organizations that do things around um, climate resilience, uh, around Ukraine support, things like that, like in this example I have here. Um, if they're highly competitive, you know, you really want to think about it's probably not the best option to do it on Google ad grants because my ads are not going to get served up because the competitive landscape is too high. If you need to see advanced detailed uh, cohort and affinity targeting in Google Analytics from your advertising channels. So like if you need to see um, the interests of your the people that are clicking on your ads or engaging with your website, those kinds of things uh, in a really fine detail, definitely want to consider using the paid version. So this search results page here is just an example of a search term you know, made up of these keywords, help Ukrainian refugees. It obviously has a lot of noise, right? There's a lot of competition here. So my guess is that some of these organizations are using paid ads. And then I see we have another question. Do you get kicked out of Google Grants if you don't maintain a 5% CTR? Um, you won't get kicked out. Your account will get uh, will receive a penalty. You usually get a warning first. You know, they'll they'll tell you that you need to maintain that 5% uh, click-through rate. The good thing about Google Ads now is it will tell you things that you can do to your keywords. It will tell you things that you can do to your landing page so that how you can improve things so that you can get that click-through rate, that average click-through rate over 5%. We're also gonna look at some, um, some responsive search ads that help make this a little bit easier as well. And another question, is there a minimum Google Ads paid usage required to use Google Ad Grants? Not that I'm aware of, but uh, keeping the 5% click-through rate typically means you're going to spend at least a couple of hundred dollars a month, um, which is good. I haven't seen many organizations that actually spend the full 10,000 um, every month, but I've seen some organizations get very close. And I have heard of organizations that have expanded the Google Ad Grant into another tier um, above $10,000, which is really exciting, but I personally haven't seen it at any of the orgs I've worked with. 
So if you have highly competitive keywords, you definitely want to go with paid ads. So if you've got keywords, you know, around insurance, loans, mortgage, attorney, credit, lawyer, donate, degree, the cost per click is way higher than the $3.29 sense that uh, Google is going to limit you with Google ad grants. So this is not a fun fact, but it is an interesting fact. Since Google started search-based ads about 20 years ago, terms related to mesothelioma from asbestos-related lawsuits are consistently the most expensive keywords for advertisers using paid ads. So there's actually law firms that will bid up to $353,000 or $353 per click to get that click to their landing page. So if it's very lucrative and you think it's going to be hard for your organization to compete, it's definitely worth uh, considering paid ads. Let's see. I have another question. Why wouldn't you want to spend the full 10K? I think you would want to spend the full 10K if you can. I think that would be an amazing goal to, uh, to attain. So a question comes up is, how do, you, how do I know what's competitive? The best thing you can do is uh, do it yourself on your own organization's search terms and see what the results are. Your nonprofit brand should be unique, you know. Does your organization display prominently on page one of your organic results? Or are you showing up on page two or three? Because we don't want that. Do you see lots of other ads sort of cluttering and adding noise to that search results page? Take a look at your programs, your mission, you know, your geographic footprint, and your strategic plan. Are there some search terms lurking inside that you can build momentum around? And what are some things your audiences are looking for that differentiate your nonprofit? So in a minute, we'll look at some tools to help you ascertain your organization's competitive advantage when it comes to uh, ad grants. So tools to boost competitive insights. There are some paid tools that require a subscription, and there's some free keyword research tools that I could recommend here. There's a ton more than this. I just wanted to give everyone a sort of top level list of some of the ones that I like and I've used. Um, for the paid subscription work, SEMrush is kind of the industry standard, but it's very expensive to use. If you're running multiple campaigns and doing a lot of competitive analysis on it, it can be like $9,000, uh, I believe, a year. So it is very expensive. Moz SEO Professional is a little less expensive. It gives you some of the same features. Uh, Uber Suggest is Neil Patel's product. Um, he writes a lot of blog posts about search engine optimization. Um, it's focused around SEO and not SEM, but it's really excellent at comparing organizations. It has a similar websites feature and a content ideas that you can look at your competitors to get ideas about what to put in your ads to make them more successful. The featured paid tool I wanted to talk about is SE Ranking. It's a Ukraine-based uh, SEO and search engine marketing tool that you can do paid traffic research on. It's fairly affordable. Uh, it's also great for SEO. Um, it's kind of SEO and SEM independent or agnostic. Um, it excels at benchmarking where your nonprofit is today and where you'd like to go. It can even show you, like if you type in a competitor's uh, URL, it can show you the ads that they're currently running so you can get a sense of what their ad copy is and how much they're spending, which is also a way to tell if you're Competitors, so to speak, or your neighbor nonprofits are using Google Ad Grants or using the full paid version. And as an added bonus, you can send reports from SE Ranking, you know, to to your leadership to give a sense of how things are trending. It's really great for benchmarking and being strategic about like what you're doing today and where you want to be tomorrow or months down the road. Some of the free tools, obviously. Um, Google Ads comes with a keyword planner. It's part of the ads console, and it's available to ad grants and paid ads. And it's a great tool. Um, don't underestimate the power of just regular old Google searching. You know, in a pinch, if you're trying to think about um, competitive terms, you can get a lot of insights from just searching for different keywords, different keyword uh, search terms and the way that they're made up. And you can really get a sense of how things are 
showing up. Um, you can see how many search results you have for a particular keyword. It shows you right in Google. The Google Ads Keyword Planner will show you that and some additional information like around search volume and around the average bid for different keywords. So that's also a great tool. And then WordStream on their website uh, has a really great free tool that you can use. And Google Trends will show you how search terms are doing, you know, in the greater Google ecosystem as well. So those are some really great ways to get some insights. So I did want to talk a little bit about Microsoft's comparable offering. Microsoft um, does have a Microsoft for nonprofits program. It's not free completely, but it is discounted. It comes at a 50% discount. Uh, and it's for Bing, Yahoo, and AOL, which might sound like that's not a big deal, depending on your nonprofit. If you have search traffic sources that are heavily skewed to Yahoo and Bing, like I have in this diagram here, like more than 50% or more than 30%. And that's a significant uh, opportunity there for you to engage with those visitors using this program. If it's much less, if it's like 5% or 2% or 10%, typically we see around 10% for a combined Yahoo, Bing, and DuckDuckGo, which is also part of that, uh, that network. Then, uh, that's pretty average um, for most. Google has about 85% of the market share on search worldwide and Bing and Yahoo have less than 10% combined on average. But it may be different depending on your audiences and if they use Microsoft products. You know, So a lot of government organizations, financial institutions, banks, foundations are beholden to Microsoft products. They use Microsoft search engines. They use Microsoft products. So they're gonna get ditched up the ads that you build. So that's when it may be worth considering the uh, Microsoft uh, nonprofits program and Bing ads for nonprofits. Remember that you do need a budget to deploy and maintain a footprint here. So it's not free. So if you, you know, if you have $500, you get a thousand dollars worth of, of advertising out of it. So writing your first ad. In this section, we'll explain the relationship between ad copy, the keywords you bid on to have Google serve up your ad, and what constitutes a quality landing page. Google scores all these elements together in what they call a quality score, and we'll look at that in greater detail. And this will answer some of the earlier questions we had as well. So Google's three questions for writing your ad, and I've ad adapted this a little bit so that it's focused on nonprofits. So really think about what does my nonprofit have to offer? What does my nonprofit want to accomplish? Who are my customers? And then you can start thinking about the different components of your ad. You can think about the headline. You have the option of building a second headline. What's the description, that compelling block of text that's going to make someone click um, on that ad? What, what's on the landing page? So that's really important too. You want to make sure that there's a relationship between the content that's on your landing page and the content that's in your headline and description as much as possible, because that goes into that quality score. As bonus points, you know, Google will actually reward you. It's almost like a really cool competitive feature in the Google Ads console. It will tell you how well your ads are performing based on the number of extensions like site links and phone links that you're using with your ads. There are lots of tools out there that you can preview your ad with. You know, you can use the Google Ads console to preview the ads. We'll show you a preview. There's also a great tool by Karuya, um, which is great for actually building the ads without being inside Google to get a sense of what they're going to look like on mobile, on desktop, and in different contexts as well. So search keyword planning. In planning what keywords to associate with your ads, you wanna start using the words that work for your audience. So it's really important um, to stop using those inside the beltway phrases that don't penetrate. It's also unlikely that those terms are gonna have really good search volume. Google will tell you if something is too jargony or too wonky. Really think about the words that your audience use. Think about the words that your competitors use. 
find that sweet spot that's well matched to your audience expectations and use those to build your search terms out of those keywords. You can analyze the keywords your peers are using, and then you can test your hypotheses using those tools that we just shared in an earlier slide. So letting Google pick the best ad copy. A new feature of Google Ads and Ad Grants is responsive search ads. These are available you know, to Ad Grants as well. And essentially, in a nutshell, what it is, is you write a series of different headlines. I think you can write up to 10 different headlines. You can write different descriptions. And Google will use machine learning to figure out which combination of headlines and descriptions is going to get the best click-through rate for that particular user who's looking at your ad. So that's what I was talking about earlier when I mentioned that Google has artificial intelligence and machine learning built into how they're serving up their ads. And it's something you can take advantage of. It is a little more work up front because you have to think about headlines that are interchangeable with one another and descriptions that are interchangeable with one another. But you can let Google do the heavy lifting, which is really exciting. Another thing to consider with this and why it's good to do this is by the end of June this year, the ability to write a single text-based ad is disappearing. So it looks like from all um, indications that Google is moving towards having responsive search ads as part of both the ad grants and paid ads platforms. Quality landing page considerations. So this is where you're sending people on your site when they click on the ad. Google does rate your landing pages using a quality score that assesses how easy it is to read, how relevant the landing page is to the keywords you used and the headline and the description, how transparent everything is so that you can get to that page, you know, so that the call to action is easy, how easy it is to navigate, how fast the page loads is very important as well. That's part of the, the quality score. The Google Ads quality score sweet spot, if you have keyword relevance, ad relevance, and landing page relevance, and you've got the, the perfect marriage of those three things, the perfect score is 10. Um, it is hard to get a 10, but it's not impossible. Um, I've seen ads run successfully with a quality score anywhere between six and eight. You know, that's fine. If you have five and below, that's something where you wanna look at what Google is telling you about these different components of your ad and make some improvements. Google will tell you some things that you can do differently um, to make improvements there. All right. So let's talk a little bit about next steps and peer into the future. If you're new to the Ad Grants program, which I suspect many people on the call are, there's four things you can do today. You can go to the Google Ad Grants page and check out the program in more detail. If you're ready, get your organization's nonprofit tax ID and start the application process with TechSoup. If you can confirm that you have Google Analytics installed and your SL, SSL status is, is there, make sure your mission's ready to find on your website. Number four, you can start identifying your landing pages and the conversion goals you want to achieve. So this is a, our call to action page. Obviously at Parsons TKO, we've done this before. So if you still feel overwhelmed or inundated with the information and need help and want to have some enablement to learn how to do some of this yourself, we're here. So we can incorporate a search engine marketing audit or roadmap into our audience acquisition audit easily if you're using ads or ad grants and need help getting started or making things, uh, making improvements with what you're doing. Also, if you're interested in combining Google Analytics 4 and Google Ad Grants planning, that's also something that's right up our alley. Lastly, um, thank you for coming and please take a look at our free content on the website. We've got tons of articles. We have a YouTube channel with uh, hundreds of videos that I think you'll find engaging, no pun intended. 
Um, our CEO, Tony Kopechny, has a great podcast called Engaging Ideas that you can subscribe to. It's on Spotify and now on Apple Music as well, um, among other channels. And we're always doing events like this. Um, we have quite a few coming up. So keep, keep an eye on our website, subscribe to our newsletter. You'll get some information about that. If you want to talk to me, um, if you want to reach out and discuss a project that you have in mind that might entail some of the conversation that we had today, feel free to reach out to me. This links to my LinkedIn page. And we also have a describe your project form on our website.